Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We'll be looking at the games releasing from the 3rd of April up until the 9th, but before that we'll start with any games that came out in the last week or so that haven't been in one of these videos for whatever reason. We've just released our monthly video of the highest rated reviews on the channel for the month of March, a very good month all told, and I'll put a link to that video in the top pinned comment, but what will the first full week of April bring? Well, let's find out. Starting with those games that are already out then, and one that I know was very highly anticipated, this is Retromania Wrestling. This was due to come out on a Switch about a month ago now, but was delayed on all consoles I believe, and is a 2D retro inspired wrestling game that harkens back to the old arcade wrestling games. It says there are 4 distinct game modes including a story and over 50 possible match variations. It calls itself the official sequel to the classic arcade game WrestleFest, which whilst I am not a wrestling fan at all, I do actually remember playing that arcade game quite a bit, owing to it being one of the machines that was in the pub that I used to go to with my mum and dad as a kid. We'd meet my aunts and uncles and my cousins there and we'd play a variety of the machines, drinking bottles of coke and eating Monster Munch until it was time to go home. There are 16 playable characters and you can play with up to 4 players, plus it has 15% off of the eShop price up until the 6th of April. Also out but not a full game, you have Knockout City the Crossplay Beta. This is a free download in preparation for the release of Knockout City across all platforms in May I believe it is 2021. As far as I understand Knockout City is a team based competitive multiplayer game where the gameplay most closely resembles dodgeball. It says the new features of the beta version are a new map, back alley brawl, a new ball which locks onto targets from across the map, new styles and new game modes including collecting diamonds from your opponents in 3v3 diamond dash or you can opt for a 1v1 deathmatch. Whilst it doesn't say it explicitly on the eShop I have heard that this is only going to last for a couple of days, I think it starts on the 2nd of April and finishes on the 4th so if you are interested you might want to get it downloaded. First up for the games releasing this week then, we have Star Wars Republic Commando. Now this game first came out in 2005 for the Xbox and Windows and is a tactical first person shooter set in the Star Wars universe. Set within the Clone Wars, it says that chaos has erupted throughout the galaxy. As leader of an elite squad of Republic Commandos, your mission is to infiltrate, dominate and ultimately annihilate the enemy. You play as a team of four known as Delta Squad and you'll need to battle a variety of enemies using your squad to its fullest, performing strategic manoeuvres in order to claim victory. You received pretty good reviews back in the day, around about the 8 out of 10 mark I would say on average and it's selling for £13.49 or your regional equivalent. Then you have Lost Words Beyond the Page which is coming out on the 6th of April and sells for £11.99. This is an atmospheric narrative adventure that takes place in the personal diary entries belonging to a young girl named Izzy. It says it features an immersive story crafted by renowned games writer Rihanna Pratchett. There is 2D adventure platforming where you'll be navigating through the worlds and it does this whilst using a watercolour aesthetic. You need to harness words to alter the environment to create a safe passage for the young girl making further progress into the game. By the looks of it, it came out on Google Stadia about this time last year and has a pretty decent Metacritic score for that particular platform, currently sitting on a 78. I have to find out why a dragon attacked my village. Her hope was shattered. Why is this happening? It isn't fair! I felt so confused. A cold. Next up then is Breath Edge, which also comes out on the 6th and is a survival game set in outer space. This is a survival adventure game where you take on the role of a character known just as The Man, who is taking his granddad's ashes to a galactic funeral when suddenly he finds himself in the middle of a universal conspiracy. A crash leaves the area you are in full of debris and coffins and you will need to try and survive. It says here not dying is a challenge and you will be losing your progress in spectacular ways, including but not limited to suffocation, freezing, incineration, electrocution, depression, blunt trauma and more. Lovely. 
You'll be crafting tools and piloting vehicles by the sounds of it too. And I believe this has been out on Steam for a couple of months now and has fairly okay scores over there. It's selling for £22.49, but it does have 20% off of that price up until the 13th of April. I won't make it through three more chapters. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I won't make it. No, really, I've had enough. Coming out on the 8th of April, you have Island. This is a romantic sci-fi visual novel, which has been out on Steam for a couple of years. I think it's also had its own anime show too. It's set on a tropical island named Hiroshima, but when it is threatened with a deadly disease, a young man claiming to be a time traveler washes ashore. All he remembers is that he must complete a mission. You will be making choices that affect the story at certain points, and this particular package also includes an epilogue called Tomorrow is the Big Day. It's selling for quite a hefty £53.99, but if you are interested, as I said, it comes out on the 8th. Next up is a game called Cozy Grove. This comes out on the 8th too and sells for £10.99, although it does have 10% off of that price up until the 14th of April. It says here, Welcome to Cozy Grove, a life sim game about camping on a haunted, ever-changing island. As a spirit scout, you'll wander the island's forest each day, finding new hidden secrets and helping soothe the local ghosts. It says that it features beautiful hand-drawn landscapes, dozens of memorable characters and spirits for you to find and befriend. You can craft decorations, go fishing and more and it has 40 plus hours worth of content within its campaign including side quests and is designed to span months of playtime. Watching the trailer I've got to admit I would have assumed it was a survival game rather than a life sim game to begin with but it definitely has a charm about it and does look quite interesting plus that price does seem quite generous if you are getting as much content as is mentioned here in the blurb. Next up then is a game called Luxlinger which comes out on the 9th of April and is a shooter with quite a unique luck mechanic. It says it's inspired by the spaghetti western classics and the unrealistic fast gunslinging that takes place in such movies and is infused with some dark gritty humour. You will be collecting luck as you go about your way and it looks as if this can come in handy to keep you alive with scenarios such as bullets missing you completely or you surviving a fall into a pit if you have enough of the aforementioned luck. If you are down on your luck, bridges might collapse, rocks may tumble on you or the outlaws might just know where you are sleeping that night. That's probably better than the in-laws knowing where you're sleeping that night. I believe this has been out on Steam for a little while and seems to have good scores over there, seems to be quite a fun shooter. It sells for £9.99 but does have 20% off of that price up until the 22nd of April. Next up then we have The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 4 which joins its predecessor Trails of Cold Steel 3 in coming to the Switch. This comes via publishers NIS America and in this new game it says it boasts the largest character roster in the series history with heroes from all over seeking to join the calls. New and returning systems are available including the ability to summon giant mechs to the field using auto battle for more expedient combat and utilising lost arts. I do still find it quite strange that they haven't released one and two of this series on the Switch yet as as far as I understand these are quite narrative heavy games. We have reviewed Trails of Cold Steel 3, I'll put a link to that particular review in the top in comment if you want to have a watch of that, just to give you some sort of context before this game is released. And the final game for the week then, we have The House in Fata Morgana, which is published by Limited Run Games. This is a gothic visual novel with the story spanning nearly a millennium and it says it deals with tragedy, human nature and insanity. This particular version includes The House in Fata Morgana, which is the main story, A Requiem for Innocence, which is a prequel, and Reincarnation, which is a sequel. 
It says here it also includes other additional short stories. Now I've said a couple of times I am a big fan of visual novels when they focus on horror or mystery and whilst I've never played it I've heard it is very good. It's definitely one that interests me. This will be getting a physical release via limited run games at some point soon but for now this digital version is selling for £31.49 and it comes out on the 9th. So there you have it then, the first full week of April and the Switch releases as it brings with it. Not the heavy hitters that we've had in the last few weeks, but it's definitely quite an eclectic collection of games, life sims, survival games, tactical shooters, JRPGs and visual novels. Please do let us know if any of these games interest you or if you've played any of them in the past, share your thoughts on if they're worth getting in the comment section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.